Thank you. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll call this meeting of the Montague County Commission to order. Today is Tuesday, June 18th at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let the record reflect that all three commissioners are present. First item on the agenda is consent and approval with our county administrator, Renata McClure. Good morning, Renata. Good morning, Renata. We have zero exonerations to approve today. Minutes for June 12th, 2024. Vouchers, General County, 160,329.97. 9 Chestnut Ridge Park, 2,393.58. Camp Muffley, 278.72. Mason Dixon Park, 616.53. Recreation Levy, 1,533.55. Reallocated coal, 161.02. Purchasing card, General County, 48,977.54. Magistrate Court, 1761, home confinement, $56. Chestnut Ridge Park, 42460, Camp Muffley, 50109. Mason Dixon Park, 14876, Mon County Center, 13915, for a voucher total of 225, 324, 39. No budget revisions, position vacancies for boards and authorities are listed on our website and fiduciary orders for June 18th, 2024. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the consent and agenda items as presented? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. Do we have any fiduciary issue? No. Items? Okay. Introduction to new employee personnel changes. Prosecuting attorney has a new full-time assistant prosecuting attorney, uh, Marshall Foster. So start date is July 1st and salary yearly salary of 70,000. Move to approve the new employee as presented. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any others? No. Okay. Moving right along. Next section of the meeting is comments from the public. I'm now open the comments from the public session of the meeting. Anybody wishing to be uh, heard, please raise your hand, come forward, provide your full address and um, Time may be limited at discretion of the president. They come forward. He can't see you. Oh. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he can't see you. Hello. Good morning. Welcome back. You're on vacation for a few hours. Marianne Foles, 828 Bloody Run Road. And uh, the topic of the day is this is a little bit of a, a sticky one. I don't know if you guys are going to like this one as well but uh green bag road roundabouts i know that the work is you know they're starting to hand out uh or do the assessments for property uh, but i just want to throw out something i don't know if you've thought about this but um you know uh, mr sequoia i know you're a very database person i'm a database person um so what i have done over the last year um is followed some of these trucks and not in a creepy way just to see where they're going um, and so I I have a pretty good idea of of where they go um, I've also Google mapped the length that it is the additional length for them to go take Green Bag Road versus going through downtown and um, the the data is that it's a um, it, currently it's approximately six minutes longer to take Green Bag Road than it is to go through um, uh, Brockway and, and, and Walnut Street for the folks who are heading north and west. Um, it's approximately, so it's three miles and six minutes longer. And the folks who are going south, they already take Green Bag Road. I see them all the time. I'm sure you do too, for based upon where your office is. Um, so the, um, the problem is with the folks who are going to going north and west and about half of those trucks stop there at the uh, facility next to the Seneca Center so that's where about half of them are going um, it's a 21 mile trip 42 miles round trip as an extra six miles round trip if they take Green Bag Road so I did the math um, that's approximately if they took three trips a day which is is um, uh, conservative they could easily do four um, that is an extra three thousand dollars a year in diesel fuel 
and it is an extra three weeks of drive time to take Green Bag Road. Now these are independent drivers, they don't work for Greer, so they're going to be in a position where you're asking them or you know, hoping that these folks are gonna take a um, $3,000 a year basically cut plus the amount of money that they would get from not driving an extra three weeks. Um, so, you know, I talked to a few of them. Um, and what I can tell you is so far I have yet to meet any of them that are planning to change their route. And they're not planning to change the route for exactly the reasons I just mentioned. So, um, you know, we're going to spend after phase one and phase two, $3 million, and we're still going to have these trucks coming through downtown. So my concern is, is this the right approach? I want the trucks out in downtown as much as you do, but I'm feeling like we're going down the wrong path. And I, I would ask that you all think about this, excuse me, think about is there another route that we could take or that we could encourage them to take that's closer to the route that they're taking today. Because I, I do feel like in, in general, we're going to spend all this money and it's going to be for nothing. Although for people like me who drive Greenbag Road, it'll be a nicer road, but it's, it's not going to help. It's not going to help the problem downtown. So that's my, that's my topic for today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the public comment session of the meeting. Okay, the next item on the agenda is, I'm sorry, I got lost my place, uh, Grants, Colleen Coon, our county office, commission office manager. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I have a request for the first one is for the Saki Grant um, Purpose Area 1, and that is in the amount of $11,815.63. The next one is um, the Saki DNA Grant, that, which is Purpose Area 3, and that is in the amount of $11,883.59. And finally, I have the Community Development Block Grant in the amount of $1,693.44. We would authorize the president to sign the grant documents as presented. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is correspondence. Do we have any correspondence? None for me. No. Okay. Moving right along. Unfinished business. We have none. New business. Consideration to approve a request from the Upper Monongalia. Mongahelia River Association for funding towards lock operations. So move. Oh, second. Okay. Um, you want to provide a little bit of a description? Yeah. So um, many years ago, the commission entered into an agreement with uh, the Upper Monongahela Mongahelia River Association for funding towards lock operations. Mm -hmm. And the commission and uh, <laughs> to administer uh, this contributed funds account. Um, so they get donations or contributions from different entities, Marion County Commission, UMRA, which is the Upper Monongahela River Association, um, the Development Authority, and some other entities. Granville, I think, has contributed to it. Um, and so there's a pool of money um, in order to assist the, the Army Corps to keep the locks open so that the river traffic can continue because they were they were discussing at one time to reduce that to almost nothing. Yeah. Um, so um, UMRA has requested that the commission um, actually provide $10,000 in funding towards the lockages. This is not something that we have done on an annual basis, but the commission has agreed to do that from time to time just to replenish the fund. Okay. So we have a first and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion passes. Consideration to approve the request by the Monagalia County Abandoned and Dilapidated Property Enforcement Agency to move the following properties to the complaint stage in accordance with County Ordinance 2004-01. District 3, Map 17A, Parcel 10, 62 Brock Mine Road. District 3, Map 17B, Parcel 36, 816 Mason-Dixon Highway. District 7, Map 5B, Parcel 44, 140 West Jackson Street. District 7, Map 12, Parcel 37, 
2363 Fairmont Road. Okay, so will the commission move to approve the um, moving those properties to the uh, complaint stage? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah, no, this is just uh, that we appreciate Alex, our uh, litter control officer, moving this forward and taking an active role in um, seeing that these complaints are, are, are brought forth to the commission and uh, try to get some of these properties cleaned up for the betterment of our mm. community. Okay. We have a first and a second. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Okay. Consideration of an award regarding RFP 2024 MCC 002 for janitorial support services. Um, if you guys recall, this was uh, we initially issued the RFP of 61423. Um, that was uh, RFP 001. We received no uh, no responses, so we redid the statement of work. Uh, we moved the work around. Uh, we uh, created uh, separate firm fixed price line items for the there's the daily and the weekly and then there's monthly and there's semi-annual and then there's annual so that way one of the feedback we got from the current vendor was um, they weren't able to do a lot of the tasks but we were being built a firm fixed price for all of those services so it's more efficient if we broke those out we also took out consumables and the, the county has a plan to uh, hire a uh, custodial supervisor that will will order and keep track of the consumables that's a savings to the to the county and that way we have a little bit more control over those over those consumables and make sure that they're used here in the county so we restructured that a little bit and we did get two responses to the second RFP RFP RO2 which is the one we're talking about um, we got two responses in one from uh, patent building services LLC uh, patent build, building services incorporated and the other was bucket ladies LLC um, they were both very close from a technical standpoint um, we evaluated them both technically and then once we did the technical uh, evaluation and determined that they met the medium acceptable threshold then we did the cost evaluation and um, through all that, uh, we went back and asked for a best and final offer, uh, mainly not really as much for the cost aspect of it, but more for the technical aspect of it to ensure that how they were going to get the work done. And we did receive responses from both. Uh, one in one patent in in bringing sending back their best and final offer also lowered their initial offer. Um, Bucket Ladies responded to the technical. Um, information that we asked for but indicated that their offer was their best and final offer so the final determination was it was patent building services incorporated that was the um, overall successful offer we had a meeting with them last week to ensure how the if if awarded and how the um, the services would be um, performed uh, we were satisfied with that so that we determined to put it as an action item to come forward before the commission um, to uh, approve so what we have before us is a, a request to approve the proposal received by patent building services LLC which um, will be incorporated into a final agreement and then once that agreement is um, finalized and ready to uh, execute then I ask that the commission uh, uh, grant approval for myself or the administrator to go ahead and sign that agreement but what we're approving is the proposal and we'll make sure that the pro proposal matches the agreement so moved second <laughs> easy enough you got all that Brad <laughs> <laughs> all right so we have a first and a second do we have any other comments Okay. And this is a very uh, area, and I've seen it in both areas of my professional life. It's hard to find uh, entities to come in and do this. We toyed around with hiring staff a couple years ago. Uh, we didn't get the number of uh, applicants that we would like. Uh, so then we went back and tried to reformulate the existing contract. And hopefully this is a good path forward. Um, we did put some things in the contract that makes that provides an incentive for the um, vendor to perform um, we allowed for uh, price increases in 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 uh, that match the computer consumer price index of of the each renewal year uh, we also acknowledge that um, there's some federal labor laws that are changing and if those change and have to um, cause changes in their employees uh, 
wages that we will also uh, look at those as long as documentation is provided to that effect. Um, so I think it's fair and I think this is a good path forward. So we have a first and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. To consider for approval requisition number 29 for the Series 21B Harmony Grove Phase 1 Project Fund. Move for approval. Second. Adrian Enterprises LLC for project management, Preston Contractors for road work, and the Mills Group for site inspections. Okay, we have a first and second. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Okay, motion passes. Consider a request for proposal 24, 2024 MCC004 for HVAC system support services. Do I have a motion to approve the RFP? So moved. Second. Okay, and um, this RFP is we have a I think about eight or nine individual contracts with um, an entity to perform these services for different buildings and all those contracts have different uh, period of performances uh, so we realize that given all these contracts in total uh, should be something that every once in a while we should put put out the bid to make sure that we're getting the best price possible. Uh, so we've pulled these things together into one contract and this that's the purpose of this RFP. Um, so we'll be sending this out and um, hopefully um, we'll, we'll get obviously hopefully responses from the current uh, vendor and then possibly a couple couple more uh, to make sure that we're getting uh, the best value for our for the money that we pay for these services. So we have a first and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, thank you. Consideration to approve emergency funding in conjunction with the City of Morgantown for the part of the house. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, a couple weeks back, and I know that the Bartlett House was in when they announced that uh, they were having financial difficulty. Uh, uh, there was a lot of concern locally about being involved in, in, uh, in regards to the Commission. We got a lot of requests to be involved in the solution. Um, the Commission chose to uh, delegate me to work with the City Manager uh, to ensure that some solution was being uh, worked on. Uh, but that way to do it behind the scenes rather than make a public show of it um, if, it, if we felt like we can accomplish more. Um, I am confident that there is a solution that will be worked out and will be uh, in place, hopefully July 1. Um, Tom, you probably know more than that, about that than me, but I'm just I'm confident that they will have something in place that will move forward in July 1. Uh, this request was to make sure that we can keep the, the existing employees working through the end of June. Uh, so the city manager came and he said it was a, it was a $35,000 number to get uh, Bartlett House through June, and would the county be interested in participating in half of that? So this request is for $17,500 to match our half that will also be matched by the city um, as a one-time payment to Bartlett House to cover payroll of employees through the end of June. So um, we have a first and a second. Uh, any other discussion? Um, no, that just that this was an emergency funding and we had to get this fund to them immediately so they could be paid on Friday. And as you stated, this is a one-time, I want it very clear, a one-time consideration because we realize the emergence the urgency of the situation and it's essential to keep the employees right. that are there they know how the facility runs um, for the continuity of it if another group is brought into right. which is the solution they're working towards to continue the operations for a seamless operation to continue it's essential that we keep these employees that are there and engaged and willing to stay um, so that we don't lose these services that are so desperately needed and, and Yes, the the, the um, commission delegated me to talk to the city manager, but Commissioner Arnett sits on the um, Morgantown Community Resources Board, uh, which uh, runs the Hazel's House of Hope and is the landlord for, for Bartlett House uh, for their homeless shelter. And, of course, Tom, you're involved in a lot of these organizations. So we, we've all been involved, but... Um, 
and we just thought that it best if I just talk directly with the mm -hmm. city manager and the city and then I talk with commission the city manager talks with the city council and we can get a lot more done um, okay. in that manner so we have a first and a second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. Next item on the agenda is consideration of an award in response to RFP 2024 MCC BBD 001. Move to approve. Second. And for discussion, go ahead. Oh, you want to have some discussion? Oh, I didn't one? know if you wanted to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Considering how many months have you worked on you this? You can tell by Tom's drum, drum roll that uh, this was this was a big item and it certainly it is, is. Um, for for those of you that don't know the uh, this RFP was uh, a broadband development RFP that we put out in February and Tom's right we've been working on this since uh, 2009 was the first time uh, the administrator and I went to a uh, region 6 meeting where they handed me <coughs> a plan for uh, broadband for the whole region and that region includes Doddridge, Harrison, Mar Marion, Montegalia, Preston and Taylor and they actually handed us the plan <laughs> and I looked at the plan and I went to our section and it was like one million nine hundred dollars nine hundred thousand dollars why don't let's do it <laughs> and I asked them that question okay so how do you let's do it how do we how do we do that um, and I kind of got a strange look but uh, after reading the plan I felt like well there's a lot here. there's a lot that we don't know mm -hmm. and one of the things that we probably ought to do is do our own plan so we really have something that's tailored for Mon Montegalia County so we started this extensive uh, RFP it took us like nine months just to get the st scope of work together and we had a number of individuals and a number of organizations all across the county that were working on this uh, so we put out we put out an RFP in February of 21. Uh, we had 10 responses. Uh, we down, down selected to the top five and we did orals for all five of those. Uh, and then we ended up with, um, at that point, we, we had a ranking as far as technical and, and we had those that achieved the, the minimal uh, acceptable um, requirement as, as spelled out in uh, state code in regards to technical capability so then we went into the cost section of it and that's where it proved to be really challenging because our, our um, the uh, highest the, the highest bid was actually um, uh, ice Miller team and they were about 250,000 and the lowest the next uh, competitor was like 50,000 but ice Miller had done such a great job uh, in the orals that um, and we weighted this thing 70 30 so it allowed us to put that much more emphasis on the technical side of it um, and Ice Miller was the um, eventual winner uh, so then we spent um, nine months with Ice Miller working on the plan uh, going through all parts of this county meeting different areas doing a survey um, and at the end of that nine months we came up came up with our strategic comprehensive broadband plan for the county so the next step was is okay how do we do this so we, we had we put provisions in that original RFP that allowed for a follow-on contract with whoever our consultant was and so we we entered into follow-on contracts with uh, lit communities um, who did the technical assessment and they did all the engineering uh, we also had a grant component uh, so we hired someone to okay as we go forward our plan was to provide a countywide uh, middle mile broadband network and uh, we were going to finance that through grant so we grants so we had a hardy and and our ARPA dollars so we had a we had a pretty hefty uh, grant um, task in there too to, to go out and start looking at all the grant documents so we we looked and again at all parts of this the the Commission was very involved the, the overall Commission was very involved in this process but we picked ring 11 which was in the western end of the county as the place to start mm -hmm. uh, and as we started working through the engineering we did a uh, wireless assessment of the area which came back that wireless assessment itself came back 17 million dollars <laughs> to, to do a wireless uh, and it required like 12 towers right. and we had just spent two years putting up one at uh, <laughs> Catherine's knob so the Commission didn't have a, a real good appetite for that um, so we started looking at just the you know we know we want to do what we said in the beginning we want to have uh, a fiber backbone and um, 
try to go that route. So we had the engineering done. And around that time, a lot of these grant opportunities really started breaking loose. Uh, we had the, the bead was the big one that came out. And the state and federal kind of changed direction as far as how they wanted to do those grants. Uh, they really wanted to do those grants not like we were doing it here. We were kind of anomaly where we, we said, how do we do this? Let's figure out a plan and let's execute that plan. While everybody else was kind of sitting back and saying, well, we need people, we need experts that know how to do this and let's just leave it all on them. So we were kind of doing it from a program from a program standpoint uh, the way we thought we should have done it and but the grant funding wasn't going to flow that way so we had to rethink and that's where we decided well okay so now we we've done enough engineering where we really can give people the playbook for how to provide connectivity to our whole whole county so let's do that let's release that in an RFP and see what we get so we released that RFP um, I think we released it last, um, uh, um, October, October 23, um, we released RFP and uh, we had the responses came in around uh, Christmas time, around January, um, and we started the whole process of going through that. We had, we had two responses, we had Frontier and we had Comcast. Um, as we started doing the technical evaluation, uh, Comcast was unanimously rated the highest of all of, of all eight of our evaluators. Uh, so I came back to the commission and uh, laid it all out there as far as what both were offering, and um, had a head nod from the commission to go ahead and see if we can negotiate an agreement with Comcast. Uh, and that's what we've been working on since I believe we started our first meetings in March. Um, so we've been working with the Comcast team every week. Um, we've had weekly meetings and last Friday we um, basically got to the point where we had an agreement that was ready to break, bring before commission and that's what we have here. So um, it's, it's, a, been a, it's been a wonderful experience even way back to the, the um, um, Region 6. but. I'm happy to finally start handing stuff off and seeing shovels in the ground and seeing people actually executing. So um, here's where we're at. Um, this total project is $17,820. Uh, the commission's part of it is $5,980,000, which we'll use out of our ARPA funds, and Comcast is, um, is uh, going to provide the rest. So um, I've done all this talking do you guys want to talk or uh, Kevin do you want to come up and say anything I'll, uh, yeah please <laughs> please yeah, I'm good. Uh, good morning everyone my name is Kevin Broughter I'm the vice president of government affairs for Comcast and I just want to thank you all for your forward-looking uh, leadership here because I, I know this is a ton of work and it's been going on for a number of years and I want to thank especially Commissioner Sakura uh, because uh, going back to 2009, I know how much work he's put into this, and it really has been a pleasure. Uh, 2019. I'm sorry, 2019. I wasn't here. I was giving another decade. I'm sorry. 2019. But but still, uh, yeah. we know this is not an easy problem to solve for. But we do believe that these kinds of public-private partnerships are the best way to kind of close out this rural digital divide. And we're just thrilled to be here today to kind of not only uh, be selected for the, as the winner of this RFP, but really kind of get to work on actually building out the network. So I want to thank you all for your for your leadership, for the hard work that you've put into this too, and just work. We just can't wait to get to work to kind of build out our our gig speed Xfinity network and bring that to more residents here in the county. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Kevin. You want to go? go ahead. I just like to thank Sean for he's literally put in hundreds and I don't use that as an exaggeration hundreds of hours into this it's been his baby from the beginning I mean Tom and I have been around to to for feedback and, and help where needed but this has basically been all Sean so uh, we appreciate the effort and the work and we wouldn't have gotten close to being here without all your diligence and not that you need a pat on the back from me but thank you very much for all your efforts in this and uh, thank you to Comcast for stepping up and providing us with an incredibly a much better solution than I think we could have ever come up with on our own as far as uh, the comprehensiveness and the and the cost. So thank you and, and uh, 
we look forward to working with you going forward. Well, this has certainly been a team effort. Um, all the, when I mentioned all the organizations that were participating in this, we had the Morgantown Area Partnership, the MMPO, uh, the Morgantown Planning Commission, the 911, uh, the Morgantown Health, the Mon County Health Department, the Board of Education, uh, our County GIS, uh, the County IT, uh, Delegate Statler participated in a lot of those earlier meetings where we were trying to put together a statement of work. Uh, obviously, our County Commission staff uh, and Senator Capito and Senator Man Manchin have been uh, very instrumental. And then we ha even had a couple citizens that were mm -hmm. very very, um, I had a one one guy that kept kept emailing me about his service, so we put him on the and I kept like, let me just come to your house because I'm visual. You're like I, I yeah. we've been when we discuss these maps and stuff in meetings, it doesn't do me any good. I need to go see it. So um, this, this is, uh, the citizen's name is Dave Shrewsbury. and he works at the FBI Center, but he lives out at Cheat Lake, and um, he. He, I, I describe him as a MacGyver. He would, t he figure out a way to get connectivity. But when COVID hit, his wife was a teacher, so she had to be online. He had to be online for his job, and he had three kids at home that had to be online for schoolwork. And it just wasn't, it just wasn't cutting it. And he was doing things like he was taking, he he f he could literally like take apart a hot spot and kind of like remove the chip or whatever that would block it from being able to get get access. I mean. And I was like, I need to have a guy like this working on our team. And he participated in all th through the uh, comprehensive broadband plan. He participated in all those meetings, gave input, and was really instrumental in, in, um, in just, you know, giving us his life experience as far as how he was getting by. Um, and he still tags tags up with me from time to time. His areas, I, he he did kind of go to Starlink because that was his only option right now. Um, he has, there's a fiber line like half mile down the road. Um, but some, eventually I'm going to get his neighborhood, we're going to get his neighborhood connected. And that's probably one of the next things that we're going to talk about in, in the next couple months is how do we, how do we deal with these other areas, these other pockets. And we have a few ideas about that. But, um, you know, he just a concerned citizen and that uh, did everything. He called everybody, talked to everybody. And, um, you know, he was a wealth of knowledge to our team. So uh, it, this, was, this was certainly a team effort. And I do want to thank Tom. Um, Tom Sussman's a friend of Montegata County. Tom yeah. called me, it was uh, summer of 23, and said, hey, can, can I talk to you? Can I bring some guys in to um, show you something? So he, brought, he initially brought the Comcast team in and said, um, you know, we, we hear you. We hear you talking about wanting ISPs to come and partner with you. And we have a few ideas. And they showed me kind of like the um, uh, some uh, earlier ideas. And that, what, that was what gave me the idea for, OK, we can do this. This is something we can do. And let's put out an RFP so that we do this and everything's above the board. So we went from there. And, and Tom, I really want to appreciate all your efforts and your work that you do for Comcast, but all, all, ultimately the work that you've done to benefit the citizens of our community. I really do. You are a, a friend of Montague County. It, to, to go with what Jeff said, Sean was clearly the leader and instrumental in this project. and. For the community to understand what we really did when COVID hit, it really made a significant change for the businesses, for broadband, but really I'll tell you how it hit Mon County, the school system. It was so bad that we would send school buses out into the community to make a hotspot so the kids could actually do the work. So um, what I'm so excited about since I represent the Western End, the number one concern in the western end of Montague County is connection, connectivity, and internet. And it was really difficult to explain because when the public hears there's millions and millions of dollars that the feds give, they just assume, okay, it's like building a house. You just give it, you build the house, and you have housing. And I learned probably the most important two words, middle mile. I knew nothing of what a middle mile was. And that is to get it from here to get, we help build it and then we get Comcast to then take it to the person's house. And that really made um, such a change that when you all came in and came up with a proposal, and I really appreciate what you said, it's a private, private public 
partnership. And Sean's too modest, but because of this program, he has gone statewide. He has gone to some national uh, programs to explain how we did it. We were the first and the only one to do it this way. And hopefully it's setting the motion up for other counties to understand the process. And again, I want to thank Comcast because your bid is fantastic. It's, I mean, as he said, 17 million, we're putting in only 5 million. And people say, well, why are we putting this money? That's what the ARPA funds, our priority was. And the one other thing I want to say about Montague County, and you might want to explain it, we had, when we did the survey, we had more people respond just in Mon County for where there is a lack of connectivity than when the state did it, and they got not even half of as many responses as we got. You might, that was just something, and we did not know because what we learned and what we passed on to Senator Manchin and Capito was if one house in that area had internet, then that region was considered. And we had to change all that, and, we, and it was your help Sean and the committee and was also the uh, see uh, Ms. Palmer in the back. It was yes. It was a big help for the tax office to send those surveys off with the uh, tax yes. We were cards present. they sent. We got a response. Which That's you how never we got, got it to them. So yes. thank you for your your willingness to participate. So it was a team effort, so which again, was a suggestion made by our staff. Yes. So yeah. <laughs> it was and they did respond. <laughs> it certainly was a it certainly was yeah. a team effort. I so. did want to pass that on. Um, I know you. I know that people probably want to know numbers where and yeah. will be there'll be a concerted effort to regularly release that information and and get that information out there as we go along um, the the Comcast team will be here and uh, will will be available for any questions after uh, uh, Ben Mike if you guys have any specific questions uh, but uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, as I said how many times on our meetings I wanted to get done by a certain date and then I wanted to move into execution mode so I want to start getting those execution uh, meetings started and um, just start regularly going down that road so you know thanks to everybody and um, unless there's nothing else we'll go ahead and uh, take, take the vote. vote we have a first and a second all those in favor say aye uh, aye. aye okay congratulations Montgomery County there's one other thing that's a little bit that's a little bit related to that, and uh, Marcy, Kevin, I'll give you the opportunity. You guys had um, uh, there's a uh, community impact grant that through all of our conversations that you guys had put forward. Uh, do you want to speak to that a little bit? I know we still have to work out a lot of details, but um, sure. Uh, yes, um, as Commissioner mentioned, we're working to identify partners so where we can provide $30,000 in funding to support digital literacy, literacy efforts because we recognize that it's, more, it's, it's just as important for people to understand how to use the computers, how to use the internet, than it is just to get the internet brought to their homes too. So we're providing this grant to provide, uh, to help an organization kind of teach people how to use the internet. And uh, we look forward to continuing to work with you all to identify that organization. Also going to be sending up uh, what we call a lift zone, which is providing free Wi-Fi service to a community organization as well. So this is part of our broader effort to kind of help uh, people not only expand broadband to rural areas, but also to kind of help people get connected and know how to use this technology uh, to kind of better improve their lives. And this has this is kind of one of the things that we were criteria that we were looking at when we were evaluating our office offers. And again, we had a number of individuals. Sarah Pelfrey from the library was excellent in our team in evaluating and, and really pushing the limit on when we were when we developed the RFP to make sure that we were addressing digital equity and digital literacy. And this speaks to that where we're 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 envisioning a, probably a, a senior center where we would set this up at where we can actually uh, and help inform our citizens and, and teach them and uh, help them get more connected. So really appreciate it. This is all, this is all part of this overall partnership. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other new business? Okay. Reports from elected officials and or department supervisors? Mm -hmm. Seeing none. Reports from county commissioners. Tom? Oh, okay. Um, Let's start off with really positive, more positive news. Last week, Jeff Arnett and I attended the West Virginia Association of Counties, and I'm pleased to report that our very own Renetta McClure was chosen as the County Administrator of the Year. And I felt, and we wanted to wait until Sean was here to thank you, 
we really do appreciate it, and the state recognize that. Um, that's part one. Congratulations. Jeff will do part two. Jeff will do part two along that line. I'm so comfortable with that phrase. So. Yes. <laughs> and I'll have you know, um, Renetta texted me and asked me if I had anything to do with that. And I told her my exact response to her said, so you don't think that other people in the state see what I see? Right. And she goes, oh, that's kind of a different way of looking at it, that her peers um, her peers see what we see here in Vaughan County. So uh, thank you, Renetta. Certainly deserving. Thank you. <laughs> a couple other issues, and I'd appreciate if the media somehow promotes this. Please, tomorrow and Thursday are holidays. That means that the recycling center will be closed in Westover, and we would appreciate if people don't go there and throw the recycling down on the ground. I can tell you this year we have cameras, and we will also go after those individuals who are littering Westover and throwing the material down. So please do not show up Wednesday and Thursday. It will reopen at 7 o'clock on Friday. So that, that is number two. Um, third thing is, for the first time in three years, I'm real excited to say that the Mountaineer Food Bank will be having our food giveaway with the Pantry Plus More at Clay Battelle High School on Saturday in the 95 degree weather. But um, we really think it's important to be out there, and it's like I said, the first time in three years that we've gone back out to Clay Battelle High School and the Western End, so we'll be, we'll be having that. Um, finally, to try and uh, answer some of the questions that uh, Ms. Foltz brought up, because they're legitimate questions. Um, the Green Bag Road, first of all, has always been a truck route, and we have taken eight years to work on this process of which what happened was 82% of the city, well, 82% of the county voted to redo Green Bag Road. And that was during the Roads of Progress. The number one priority was the mile ground, number two was Green Bag Road. Now, what people do not understand is that it was the federal highway system that developed the plan and when people had questions, we went back and did a second NEPA study, and we've had four studies along this lines. We are the only city in West Virginia that doesn't have an access road outside of our city of Morgantown. So the federal government realized we needed an access road, and here was the perfect way to do it, and the $18 million that is being spent. This was approved and unanimously by the city of Morgantown, Westover, the school system, uh, MMPO, we're moving forward on this project. All other avenues and other directions did not meet the needs that would help. Now, will the trucks use this route? Again, I believe once it is built and it's widened, I truly believe not only will the trucks use the route, but many of the people that are going through the city now will have an access alternative. And that is what the public wanted, and that's why I'm very excited that you know, it's taken seven years, but we are moving forward on that. So they'll try and answer your questions. Thank you. Quick note on that. Um, my office does sit on Green Bag Road, not far from the uh, intersection of Kingwood Pike and Green Bag Road. And I can tell you that I don't know about all the trucks, but heck of a lot of trucks use that road now because they <laughs> rattle my windows as they go by. So uh, it, it, it is a, a largely trafficked road and it's a much needed improvement um a few things here belated happy father's day to everyone we didn't mention that last week yeah. just a couple days ago uh to my hero and my dad uh thank you for everything um along with the award to uh miss mcclure and i would say probably in, in a direct correlation to renetta winning administrator of the year uh, we were also selected as county of the year by the association of counties which is the uh award that Sean's holding there now. So it was a great honor and we uh, we certainly uh, would not be in that position without uh, without our staff and, and without the, my fellow commissioners. So that was a great honor and we're, we're, we're proud to have uh, won that. Um, we had our first 4-H camp last week at Camp Muffley, 190 campers. I was out there a couple of different times in the place. It was wonderful. The, the kids running everywhere, enjoying the pool and the fields and doing crafts and participating in all their activities and um, uh, shout out to Becca Fent Clark our uh, extension officer um, 
uh, with WVU and 4-H uh, putting on a wonderful camp and I'm sure she'd give accolades to her whole staff but it was uh, it was an incredibly well attended um, event and uh, I heard the food was bountiful and very good uh, my, my son actually volunteered for the week out there and uh, and he uh, he indicated dad there's so much food out here are, are you guys flitting the bill for this <laughs> I said no I said we, we supplement some to help by providing the facility but it's paid for by a 4-H through their their uh, fees so uh, it but it was a really uh, a really nice event and uh, on a side matter unrelated to Comcast being here today I had a call from a concerned citizen who looks after a, a, an elderly homebound gentleman on uh, old on 857 not far from the volunteer fire department that had been out of service for a few days I simply made a call to the uh, customer service number and within 24 hours the service mm -hmm. was turned back on so I, I just did that through the regular number I didn't use any contacts we had in meeting you all so uh, your, your team did a really good job and got that gentleman uh, he basically was on an island without phones or internet because he can't get out and couldn't get a hold of anybody so I appreciate your 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 staff out there taking care of what they uh, what they did. So that's all I've got. My report is a little light. Last week I was working from Waco, so I wasn't didn't have a lot of my meetings, but I was still working nonetheless. Um, when I got back uh, this Monday, we had a meeting with the uh, Department of Highways regarding the Exit 155 project. Uh, the administrator uh, attended that meeting with with me. Um, we'll we have an MMPO meeting coming up next Thursday, so we'll. We'll discuss, we'll, we'll report our subgroup that was meeting with the DOH, we'll report back to the MMPO in regards to the progress in re, uh, regarding both of those projects. And it, uh, it seems like that might become my next, <laughs> my next project is, is getting that exit 155 and getting those two, um, yeah. those two. We have a grant award and we have a commitment from the state and somehow that's a problem we have to figure out how to make it make it work but we're going to work it out and make it work um and in regards to the mmpo um marianne i would suggest that uh if that that is a better audience for for that information and that request um because everybody you know we're only part of the mmpo and and that group along with bill austin uh, can really uh, spout out more information about that overall project and again but we do appreciate your input uh, we, we listen and uh, thank you for for bringing it to us today's a regular day um, though uh, tomorrow it's a holiday but I still have a uh, Morgantown area partnership board meeting uh, and we don't have it uh, I'll be in Rit Roanoke for a WV Corp meeting um, going down Thursday night I have my meeting on Friday it's our quarterly board meeting for the WV Corp so I'll be in uh, Roanoke on Friday uh, coming back Friday afternoon um, in regards to the, the meeting um, thank you guys I'm looking forward to uh, uh, Marcy or Kirsten or Kristen whoever's going to start those uh, uh, project execution meetings going I'm, I'm waiting and whenever I think Fridays will probably be a good day we can slot it right into the existing time frame but I'm really excited to get get moving on on that aspect of uh, the execution of the project um, and thank you for all your efforts and again Tom thank you uh, Jamie Kevin <coughs> Meredith thank you thank you all and thank your whole team because it has been a very uh, it's been a team effort um, and <coughs> sorry in regards to the uh, uh, these these awards I want to point out that these awards were from the County Commissioners Association of West Virginia so mm -hmm. they're the ones that understand what it's like to be a county commissioner and what it's like to run a county uh, so they're the most uh, uh, it's not like we got this award from you know um, some popularity contest so again Renetta it, it's very well earned and uh, the, the county it doesn't uh, tell me anything I don't know that this is the best county in West Virginia as far as how we operate as a commission and, and that's due to the teamwork of everybody our staff and everybody uh, all three commissioners uh, all you know we never politics really never come up in commission chambers we just try to figure out we don't, we don't assign labels to things we just try to figure out what needs to be done what makes sense and how do we get it done so uh, that's a tribute to all the work that we do together so uh, it's certainly well deserved and um, you know it's it's not a secret though to me so having said that I don't have anything else I'll entertain a motion to adjourn so
So moved. Second. <laughs> okay. We're adjourned. We'll be